I'd like to present a technology invented at Georgia Tech 10 years ago, which may help the world solve part of the energy problem we call nano generate because I work in nanotechnology for years. How small is nano? Let me show you the energy need. In today's world, we need energy. Everybody needs energy. No energy, no life. We always talk about large scope of energy need. But in the last 10, 20 years, we have a lot of small things. Your cell phone is a typical example. Right? Based on cell phone, there's a lot of small electronics. How small? Well, we use for medical purposes, for patient monitoring, for environmental protection over large scope. Internet of things, we want to put everything on the internet and the infrastructure monitoring as well. Huge amount of small sensors, big data. Where are the big data come from? The big data come from sensors. This sensor network. All this sensor has to be powered. You say, well, use battery. If we have billions or trillions of battery around us, are you going to replace them or are you going to do it? Not me. <laughs> Tremendous amount of work also have environmental issues, so become a big issue, uh, the concern. Just Internet of Things, the survey found, if we rely on our batteries, 90% of the Internet of Things will be impossible. So the idea, how do we make things self-powered? For example, can we have these devices that harvest the energy from our environment, power itself, send the signal out, that's needed, that's all. Can we do that? This is the technology we try to work on for the last 10 years. Let me show you one thing. This was discovered by an accident, but a good accident, four years ago. When we do experiment, we have polymers. Two-piece polymer become physical contact. We find all the electricity out of that. So what's new about this? At the very beginning, we were puzzled. But after some research, we found this related to an effect each of us very familiar with. Trouble electricity. You say, well, trouble electricity, you know that, I know that. What's new here? Well, we know trouble electric discharge. You know, when you come, your heart, your, 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 your shirts, everything. But we rarely use for power purposes. We are going to show you that. Utilize this, we can make new power. First, how do you do it? Let's say you have two dielectric contact, trouble electricity occurs. We knew that. If you bring these two to apart, there's a voltage generator. The electron has to flow. This electron flow process is the process converting mechanical energy to electricity. So how much electricity can you generate from this? Let me show you an example. This is one inch size, a fingernail size. Tapping of that can produce a current. Oops, this is too fast. You can see this is the shoe insole we fabricate here. And this you very comfortable, put your shoes, very comfortable. We're building the shoes here. Here is all organic material made things. It's organic materials. These organic materials, we can make two different materials, physical contact, separation, and we can generate power. And this is different from traditional way to do things, okay? So it looks good. How much power can generate? Well, how many people do we have? Let's see this one. You can see that if you just buy two feet by two feet board on the floor, and this guy walk on the surface, you can see that. Hundreds of LED light can flash. So put on the floor, each of us walk can generate power. This is more than enough to charge our cell phone, to drive small sensors. That's the energy I talk about. Energy associated our movement. We rarely use that, right? Okay, so medical purposes. How do you make a pacemaker last twice longer, right? We use the breathing, a small rat, and breathe three times, can drive a simulated pacemaker once. So this little tiny animal, the breathing can power a pacemaker. This is the energy I'm talking about that. We can implant this in the biomedical systems, and they can drive uh, general electricity from physical motions and drive medical devices. And this have a lot of potential for many different things. With us, we, we need to exercise every day. When we do exercises, we need to monitor a lot of things, our heart beating behaviors, our blood pressures, how many steps, etc. We build the system. Not only use the motion, and the motion can use a power pad 
and can send a signal wirelessly to some distance here. Here is purely based on motion of a human. Okay. Well, how do we do that? What's the challenge? The challenge is all for our motion is random. You can walk faster, you can walk slower. I can stand here for a little while. This is irregular energy, random energy. How do we convert this random energy into electricity using our trouble electric nanogenerator, generator, then through a power management system and store into a battery and you can use for whatever purpose you want to use. Okay, that's the idea. Let me show you one thing we've done in our lab. Here is a, a, a hand pressing generator. This is the circuit board and this is the uh, signal transmission. This car is parked 30 yards away. If you press this self-powered car key opener, this car, the door opens, okay? Let me show you that video here. You see, this was done. Use the pressing here. Uh, this is the, uh, use our homemade generator. And this is the circuit board. And then the key press here, we have a car located right here. You can see that car here. And you can see the light flash. When it's light flash, that means he opened the door for that. This is just an idea called self-powered system. We generate electricity, utilize for whatever purpose we want to use. Wind energy. When you talk about wind energy, you know that what, what do I mean, right? The, 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 the big uh, uh, turbine engine to, to rotates. Let me show you a different thing. We can use the trouble electricity for wind energy. You can see these two pieces of polymer in the wind. The, 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 the wobbling one against the other one, this is the contact separation process. It generates electricity. You say, how come? Well, let's make this array. You can have many of these units here. If you blow the wind on this, look at this light flash. New way of, you can make it on the ceiling or the roof, whatever, just like a decoration. You want to see a big thing, as we see. New energy, the energy we never use in this way, right? So this is for wind energy. I was talking things small. You said, well, small, how, how to solve the problem? But I have an idea for the big energy. Big energy. Let me tell you what it is. Water wave have huge energy. 75% of the surface of Earth is covered by water. But the energy of this one, we rarely utilize. You said, why? Well, why we don't use it? Well, so the way to use this one is the classical electromagnetic generator. This generator, you can use the current to, to, to drive it, or put on sea floor, or use the wobbling of uh, the tank to drive it. This is expensive, engineering difficult, and bulky. You can judge the cost. This is just inf impossible to judge the cost for this kind of thing. Can we do something different? Well, we tried. My goal in the last 10 years is to use human motion energy, the energy we use. Can we do something about this? The answer is yes. How? Well, we make our generator inside a ball. This ball is like the size of a baseball. Inside the shell is a core. Put these things in the water. You can see, put in the water, the water wobbling here, it is generates electricity. Just one ball generated one milliwatt, not very much. But how do you serve this energy? This low frequency, this thing fluctuates, right? And if you connect uh, this ball into nets, so like a fish net, put on the surface of this water like this, this thing floats. We calculate one kilometer square surface area, give you one megawatt. Power, all right? It's not big, but can we, if we can use this one, this is, this is a day and night. Poor the weather, the better. <laughs> Occupy no land. Is this a new energy? We call blue energy. The energy is go, go beyond green energy. Okay. So this is the, our idea, right? We can make these things possibly through our research now. We are continue driving in this direction. Say so how good it is. We have the classic electromagnetic generator we use for 100 years. How good is this trouble electric generator? We compared. I want to show you this video. You're going to see here. We use our the rotation trouble electric nano generator and electromagnetic generator here. Let's compare. And these three lights is being driven by 
trouble electric nano generator. These three lights driven by conventional electromagnet generator. Then you see the difference. As soon as we turn the, the motor here, this thing rotates. These three lights lit up by trouble electric generator immediately. This is 100 round per minute. Okay. Then you wait. You have to wait this round to a certain speed before these three lights lit up. Okay. You wait until you wait until until 300 by 50 round per minute they start shining. So why? This shows this classical electromagnetic generator works at a higher frequency. That's why you build a dam. All this, the water level has a certain level, have to drive the engine 50 hertz, 50 round per, per second, and can be effective half than that. So our technology is ideal for low frequency. How low? Well, a fresh hertz, that you say, how, how fast you walk? You just a couple of steps per second. That's your, that's your frequency. Ours is much more efficient than that. So this, Faraday invented this 1831 principle. Use coils and magnets, convert uh, mechanical energy into electricity. This is all what we base today. Our inventions use trouble electricity and use organic materials. Uh, light, cheap, and easily available materials. And then you can see at a low frequency, a few hertz, ours is much better than the classical technology. So what's the application? If you have this, the application is for low frequency, for human motion, for water wave. There's a low frequency. This is what we talk about. So therefore, we have a complementary application. Classical technology for high frequency, ours for low frequency, complements, not one replace the other one. So we don't need to build a dam for this kind of work. And this work in our daily life. Anywhere you have airflow, you have vibration, it should work. Okay? So this is the comparison. Lastly, we have a generator that converts tiny mechanical physical motion into electricity. Can you make a new sensors? The answer is yes. This sensor is self-powered because any place you trigger the sensor, this light flashes. You trigger different parts, the charisma light flash. You supply no power to this whole thing. It's so power. So I can put this underneath this copy. I walk back and forth. They can detect exactly which point I walk to, which point. So they call self-powered motion sensor. Okay. So this is one example. The other example is keyboard. You typing. I typing every day, but the way you type from is different from mine. Even the same phrase a person type. Is different from the other one. So we use uh, we build a new keyboard, put on keyboard. This keyboard what? Detect the way, the speed at which you type, and also the, the speed you strike the key. So convert the electric current itself. So can tell each one from the other one what's the difference your type from his or hers. So therefore, this keyboard recognize who is typing. Right? Even you know the password, but the, the way you type it does not fit the system, the data stored there, you can't get in the system. We use uh, the electricity, trouble electricity, carry on your fingertip. That's another application of this trouble that generate. We call self-powered active sensor for electronics. How good can we do? Well, today, we can achieve 500 watt per square meter. This is this is surface effect. The efficiency, instantaneous efficiency, reach fifty percent. We can we can more. Sometimes we can reach seventy percent, which is very high for energy conversion efficiency. So where are we can, can apply this for? Well, we have a roadmap. We published this a few years ago. Roadmap. We first one we can a power source for low consumable electronics, and. We can work working as an active sensors at the very beginning. Then we move on self-powered sensors in it with the current technology. For example, if you have a pacemaker, you have a heart beating monitoring system, we can integrate that. Then we have an integrate with new technology and a future mega scale energy for waves, ocean, or this one. This is a long shot, but new ideas come long before technology can do it. I just uh, pop this idea out 
and probably need many years of effort to make this possible, right? So, Nano General was invented in Georgia Tech 2005. What do we have used for? Micro nanoscale energy. Power small things. Power small things. We can build in the shoes. We also can use it for what? Power uh, sensors. Or it can be active sensors for robotics, human machine interfacing, medical purposes, smart keyboard, biosensing. Lastly, we can lose for blue energy a lot, mega scale energy, looking for this, as well as environmental protection here. So therefore, there's plenty of energy around us. This is new energy, the energy we wasted ever since many, many years ago. Can we make use of them for specific purpose? It can supplement current technology for energy, can make our life better. Thank you.